I have arrived. I'm going to just keep sliding down the little uh, box that I put it on. So I'm just going to try and secure that, just like a professional. Oh great, it's turned around. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe if I put a plant behind it. Or a weight. <laughs> nope. Not that. Um how about the complete works of William Shakespeare? The trusty tripod. There we go. Okay. Hello. Good morning. How are we all? Um, I feel like I should post a reminder in Life's Library. Do, 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 do. Life's Library. Hi, Sonia. How is everyone doing? Yeah, Shakespeare does make a great yoga block cover. I agree. I have used it for the very same purpose myself. <laughs> and I've been doing these um, split squats with my trainer on Zoom, which are like, I find horrendously difficult sometimes. And I've been using my coffee table, but um, sometimes I need a little extra boost. Kristen, I am doing very well, thank you. I'm glad to hear you're good. I was feeling so cabin fevery earlier and just like ready to escape. But um, I decided to push through, really. Okay. Uh, ice cream, reminder. I am live now for life's library. What I do? See the girls above, make uh, what is the link? I always love when, um, like, it's kind of a universal thing when any of us do live streams, like any single person I know, and it's just like five minutes of technical admin at the beginning. So thank you to everyone for bearing with that. Um, great. Oh, okay. Hello, hi, Ja. Hi, Sonia. Um, need to finish some advent calendar cards for friends. Great. I don't really know what I'm going to do today. I did say I would draw some self-care bunnies, um, but I would love to hear what you're working on, if anything. This is a very casual art hour. It is a low-pressure event. <laughs> it's just to like have some time out of um, out of the day and just like focus on doing something a bit different, really. Um, I don't know about you, but I spend all my day looking at the screen. Um, which I realise I'm still doing now, but it just feels like, I don't know, it, this just feels different somehow because we're doing something together, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Becky says more low pressure events are much needed. Great. There was, I was thinking of doing maybe some kind of like do a puzzle with me evening where I just do a puzzle and talk on live stream. Any other suggestions are welcome. Um, oh, lots of you are doing some colouring. Um, I'm colouring in Joanna Bashford's Lost Ocean. Oh, I love those Joanna Bashford books. They're so good. Mazza's going with their colouring book. Catherine's also doing colouring. Um, Mary's washing some plants. Great. Calm and gentle events. Wonderful. Uh, maybe I'll do, I'll do a bunny first. Why not? I feel like I have this piece of card that just came with, I think it came with a picture frame or something. And I've held it, I've kept it around for a while. So I feel like it's time to be put to use. Got pencils and pastels. Maybe I will start with pencils. And move on to pastels. I have clay snowflakes I need to decorate. Oh my gosh, you're also like on top of your um, holiday period decorating. I'm really strict, like Sana used to make quite a lot of fun of me for it. 
Um, because I'm really strict, I only ever do Christmas stuff on the 1st of December. Um, and in fact, even though we're still in lockdown here, I'm getting a Christmas tree delivered for the first time ever on the 1st of December because I really didn't like the idea of um, not having one. Yeah, the tree is like my favourite part though. Mm. Thank you, Sarah. I love this dress too. It's so much fun. I've definitely taken to wearing fun things um, just, <laughs> just to keep me going in the day. Otherwise, I will literally wear and sleep in and wear the same clothes two or three days in a row, which is also fine. I have the Dawn of South Carolina in forever. What, um, I would love to hear any suggestions for what this self care bunny should be advising people to do. Um, the snowflakes are for a community snowflake festival. Christmas has to start early for students who won't be in our uni homes for December 3rd. That's true. Kristen asked if I've already started Barack Obama's new book. I've started it, but only very briefly. Like I started the, I read the preface and then the first few pages of it. And I really wanted to keep um, reading it, but at the moment I'm still doing NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month where I'm attempting to write 50,000 words in a month and I'm doing quite well. Like I'm at 35, 36,000 or something. Um, and there are however many days are left in November to go. I think it's about a week. Um, but yeah, it has really taken over any last bit of energy from my brain. Um, reading a book that's so short that I normally would read in like three or four hours at the moment. Um, this is how you lose the time more. Um, but it's taken me forever because I've just been writing all the time. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to read it. I'm also curious about what you've all been reading and whether you've been finding reading. Oh, remember to make time for yourself during the holidays. It's a good one. Self care by any suggestion. So, in case you're curious, this is sort of, I always start with the head of the self care bunny. It's kind of faint. I always start with this like almond shaped head and then go for a big ear and then this sort of, I don't know what you'd call this, it's like a doughy body and then I kind of build it out somehow sometimes, like I do a big tail or I just make the curve of the neck wider, but this is sort of the rough place where I always begin. Most of the time, sometimes I try and draw things that aren't profile bunnies, but um, I don't know, know your strengths. <laughs> And then I usually find that I draw the head tilted too down and I almost always have to correct it and draw it tilted up. Oh, lots of you love, this is how you use the time wall, what to read it, yeah. Um, Lex bought it and then instantly after they finished it, I was like, can I borrow it? I also have, this is what I'm really, another thing I'm really excited to read. Lex let me a copy of um, One Last Stop, the new Casey McGristle book that's coming out in May, 2021. So I'm desperate to read that too. It's just, I have so many good books to read right now. What a problem, what a problem. Um, Melody says, life is about, ugh, right now, but I'll be writing down addresses and Christmas cards, brilliant. You are all currently sitting on a box that is a Christmas package that I need to send a week ago. Um, but I haven't really had the energy to go to you at the post office yet, so. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we'll see what happens there. All right. Bunny is getting some feet and a bit more of a rounded butt. Audibly Disorder said, I loved all the literary illusions and this is how you use the time war. I really like epistolary. I really like stories that are told through letters. Um, I'm a big fan of letters. I write a lot of letters myself or try to. Um, and I just love them. <laughs> and it's funny, like I send a lot of letters, but the people I send them to like aren't as massive fans of letters as I am. Like, they like receiving them, but they're not like, I don't know, for whatever reason, they're not massive at sending them. Um, so I'm always a bit like, all right, I'll just keep, I'll just keep sending them to you, it's fine. Um, but yeah, no, I love letters and I love stories told through letters because it's such a strong, you have to have such a strong voice. Um, Sydney asks if I have any other epistolary novel recommendations. Like I feel like I do, but they've all gone out of my head. I love that, um, I feel like Jacqueline Moriarty's books, a, a couple of those, is it Jacqueline Moriarty? A couple of those are told through like notes and things and I love that. Um, and there was a book called something like Life on the Refrigerator. I can't remember what it's called, but it has a pink cover or it had a pink cover when it came out 15 years ago. <laughs> I sound like that all well, um, but that's one. Um, 
which other ones? Oh, um, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society is another one I really love. Um, and I would be curious about your other recommendations or comments. I think there's definitely other ones I love. I just can't think of them right now. It is so much fun, especially with fountain pens. Yes. Hannah is watching before school. Excited to have you with us. I have given this body an eye and some little hands and a nose. <laughs> um, and I like to give it like a tufty little tuxedo belly. What I really need is like one of these like dual camera setups where I have like a camera here that's looking over, but as you know, this isn't, this isn't that fancy. Someone's doing some drilling. I'm glad that this isn't yesterday because someone was cutting trees all day on my road from 8.30 a.m. until far too late in the day. And it was just like, it, it, I'm generally quite good with that stuff. I can tune it out. But yesterday I was just like, please, please stop cutting down the trees. The Screw Tape Letters is obviously an epistolary novel but may not be everyone's taste. The Last Days of Summer is an excellent epistolary novel. It's about a young Jewish kid in the 1940s writing to his favourite baseball player. It's a wonderful, moving read. Um, Sarah asks, does the South Care Bunny have an origin story? Yes. So, South Care Bunny. What happened? I, so, when John was on... I don't know if it was paternity leave or on tour or something... Um, Nathan Zed, or maybe it was Hank who was on tour, I don't know, Nathan Zed made a video that said something like, you're a good burrito. And John asked me <laughs> to draw something that had a bunny holding a sign, or like, I, I can't remember what it was, but like just to draw something that said like, you're a good burrito on it. And for some reason I drew a bunny. I really can't, rem I can't remember the South Coast Bunny's origin story basically. But it started with Nathan Z, as all good things do. And then I drew a South Coast Bunny and then South Coast Bunny was very popular. And so I kept drawing more of them. And some of them you saw and they were at the end of um, Brothers videos and other ones you didn't see. And I think there were still South Coast Bunny posters up at dftba.com if you would like a South Coast Bunny of your own, maybe. Um, they say something like, take a minute to breathe. You might have seen them in the background of John's videos. Um, I'd like to make a plushie someday, but I don't know that there's enough demand because plushies you have to make a big order of and they're kind of a pain. But I don't know, I just feel like everyone should have their own self-care bunny. Um, this one is well on its way. Um, so at the time making this, there's two days left in the reading period for On Immunity by Eula Biss, which is our current Life's Library read. And then we were going to begin uh, Teaching the Stone to Talk, which I've been like so excited to begin. Um, do you ever just get a book and you know it's going to be your kind of book even before you've started to read it? That's how I feel about it. Okay. So... We've got the basic, yeah, the bunny's coming along basically. From here, I just do a lot of like shading and reshaping to really make it the bunny of your dreams. Um, Hannah would love a Zarko bunny plushie, great. I will pass that along to the higher ups. Um, Amy has, I'm going to be a little behind in the new one because I started a Barnes book. Well, the nice thing is like we've got six weeks plus, we're all gonna, I think, be taking things at a certain speed. I actually probably will be reading more in December because as I said, uh, I have NaNoWriMo until then and I'm just desperate to read, desperate to read. Um, but yeah, I just can't, I can't make time for them both. And really with the, with the darkness setting in at a, uh, well, so technically, like, the sun sets around, like, four now. But the darkness starts to set in around two or so here. Like, it starts to get a bit gloomy. Um, the sun doesn't quite make it over the houses opposite, etc. So it's really, I have until then, to have as much energy as possible. And then everything I do after about 
too is really tricky. So I've been trying to get started a little earlier, but I already am an early riser. And it just means I think instead, true to the theme of self-care bunny, I just have to take things at a different pace and know that the days will begin getting longer again after, what is it, the 21st of December, solstice. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is me trying to pep talk myself. Uh, Shreesh is a huge fan of the audiobook. Yeah, I love, so I, um, one of the reasons I'm so excited to read it, and some of you may have seen me talk about this on Twitter and stuff, um, is because Dreams from My Father is one of my favourite, favourite, favourite books. And if you haven't read that, I fully advise it. And I also really advise the audiobook. So I listen to the audiobook every single time I take a flight. It has become a slightly superstitious thing, for better or for worse. Um, but it's just such a well-told story. It was published in 95, so long before... Um, Obama became president and it's about his relationship um, with his family and his sense of identity and, and just trying to like figure out what his relationship could and should be with his, with his father who he um, didn't really grow up around um, but it's just it's just brilliant, I really like it um, and the audiobook's great so yeah, I'd like to listen to the audiobook of um, A Promised Land, but I think I want to read it first. All right, so I added some little um, pink paws. <laughs> it's really coming along. The problem is at this stage, I start to get really attached to my own drawing of a bunny that is essentially the same drawing in slightly different colors over and over again. Um, so I know some of you are watching from home, some of you are watching before work, is anyone watching from anywhere, or oh, at work even, is anyone watching from anywhere else, but anyone watching somewhere outside, what is outside? I've been following a lot of um, Aussie and Kiwi creators lately just because I'm like mind me what the sunshine is also so many of them have been in lockdown such a long time and have recently been um let back out into the world so it's nice to see that joy nice to see that relief of it okay bunny so I think this bunny is like looking forward to having a little break at the holidays, but feeling like they just, there are all these things they need to get done before they can truly let themselves relax. And uh, however many weeks there are until we have holidays, just feels like, the bunny feels like, oh, I'm not sure that there are enough. And so this bunny has been stressing themselves out. This bunny has been doing some stress carrot eating and uh, yeah, has been a little bit stressed out. So this bunny knows that it is important to take some time to rest. Stay in bed a little bit sometimes. Just let themselves be a bit comfy. And just let some things slide. That's been the real lesson of 2020 for me is it is okay to let things well, also even what feels to me like letting things slide is so often not actually letting things slide. It's just not working myself to the absolute max. But yeah, bunnies are highly anxious animals, so that tracks, yes. Um, Aussie hype watching before bed. Hello, Australia. Is there anything you'll be doing to celebrate the holiday season that you're excited for? Um, well, so much of it is up in the air. I'm really looking forward to having the tree arrive at um, on December 1st. And Christmas, to be honest, Christmas is really tricky for me because I find it really difficult on the like bereavement side of it. Like I find Christmas just quite sad, <laughs> to be totally honest with you, um, in a lot of for a lot of different reasons. And I just struggle with the darkness. And usually I, I counter that by having like 
lovely evenings um, and just, I don't know, going to friends' houses and all these things that we can't really do right now. So instead I'm trying to just like light candles every single night to the point that I've now run out of candles um, and do lots of drawing and do lots of writing. And I think in a way that some of the, one of the things I'm looking forward to about this December is it actually having less pressure. I should be going to, well, originally I was gonna to go to Jamaica over Christmas, cancel that in like April. Then I booked a lovely cottage in Cornwall. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna be going there either. So I'm trying to think of things I can do that would sort of, yeah, I don't know, be, be nice like that, but like without that, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but I'd like to hear what you are, what you're all planning if you have anything to look forward to. Marcus says the best news Taylor Swift folk for the Long Pond Studio Sessions Disney Plus tomorrow. Oh my gosh, great news. I did not know about that at all. So uh, that's my tomorrow sorted. It was actually quite nice this week because yeah, a lot of um, people I work with will have sometimes some of them Wednesday, but then also Thursday and Friday off because it's Thanksgiving out there. So I can actually take it at a really nice slow tempo. I think we're gonna give you some eyes properly. I don't know why I've gone for green, but that was a decision I made. It's a coat of black. Um, candle wrecks, I like the fluoro candles, I like really like neon bright colored candles. Do I like color? Can you tell? Um, I really like the bright pink ones and lots of like, home and interior shops have them. But as I say at the moment, I've been going through like entire candles every day or two days. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've, I've got to reassess my candle um, consumption, I suppose. I'd also really like to find um, a smaller candle maker rather than just buying it through these big shops all the time. Um, so I'm gonna be doing some investigating. Maybe I'll make a um, a proper investigation of candles and then report back on another one of these live streams with my with my reviews. Kristen says, I really love Christmas time, but January and February are really hard on me. I feel like the world loses hope every year for those two months. It's dark, cold, and spring is still far away. Yeah, I really struggle with those months, so I absolutely hear you. Um, I find for me, with everything, you know, in as much as this has been a really difficult year, like, this is also the case lots of years. I just have to look at most two weeks ahead because if I frame it in my head of as like, this is going to last forever, <laughs> like spring is so far away, I then fall into the abyss. Um, and it's kind of like, are you staring into the abyss? Are the abyss or is the abyss staring into you at that point? Um, so yeah, so I have to be quite careful with how I frame it and I just like, let myself have two weeks ahead at a time to plan and then also do as much as I can to make myself comfy in those months and still try and go outside while it's light, which is easier said than done. But um, yeah, massive empathy on that front. Um, yeah, lots of people struggling with mental health in the, in the darkness. For me, it's the darkness more than even the cold. Um, I don't like the cold, but yeah, it's tricky. Very tricky. On the upside, Bunny is really coming to life now. <laughs> Just gonna get this bunny some some whiskers. The angle of the nose is still not quite right. Super like I want. A little bit more tuft, a little bit more tummy tuft. Um, yeah. Should make these whiskers a little less 2D as well. It's just, sometimes it's hard creating a bunny, but trying to be kind to myself about it. Oh, thank you, Kristen. That's very kind of you to say. Um, so I started re-watching The Americans, which is a program about 
guests during like the Reagan administration. It's fictional, but it's fantastic. And I watched it for the first time during the previous lockdown. I watched all 75 episodes of it. And I just started rewatching it. Um, I watched Queen's Gambit and I watched uh, Crown. And I've been doing a lot of watching. Um, I find that easier to do after I finish writing than reading sometimes. Or I just like sit in the bath <laughs> and don't really do anything at all. It's great. I recommend that too. Podcasts I haven't been listening to that many of lately, so I'd be curious if any of you have been listening to a lot of podcasts. Um, is the art something to go on a reward chart? Do I have? I don't think I have a, a section for art making. I have one for poetry. But yeah, maybe I should. I don't know. I was thinking, like, what can I do with this lovely bunny? Maybe save them for Project for Awesome or something. It's going to be strange not having Project for Awesome in December this year. Like, it's, um, we're doing it in February because this is like always a difficult time of year. A lot of people had exams and were um, about to go home and things. And it, yeah, it just never really, never really quite worked. But um, yes, yeah, so it's moving to February. But it will be odd not to have, I'm just, just so used to having P4A at this time of year. Um, how's the pandemic situation in the UK? Um, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. We're in lockdown right now. Um, week by week cases are rising here in London, which is really bad. And it's just still too high, but we're about to lock down on the December 2nd and then we go into like a tier system because there are parts of the country where it is going down. I don't know, it's just very worrisome. And I just, I hope that we do what we can to protect as many lives as we can before, um, yeah, before we were able to start administering vaccines. But the vaccine use is huge. Like I'm so happy about that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just a bit, it's hard because it's like, I'm very tired <laughs> of lockdown, obviously, but it's also clearly the right thing to be doing. So yeah, I'm stuck. Um, Sarah, it's been a minute, but I just caught up. I'm decorating for the holidays on Friday. I'm going to make a list of one Christmassy thing to do every day until December 25th, even if it's just doing a treat. I really like that. I think that's really fun. I was thinking I might do Vlogmas again. I'd like to, but again, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself, but um, yeah, I don't know. It can be quite like, I remember really enjoying doing it in Indiana when I was also in quite a similar situation, like living by myself. Um, there's a self-care bunny. Um, and it was just a nice thing to make. Um, you've been watching all of ER. I haven't ever seen that. If anyone has tips for motivating myself to start an essay, I'm struggling. Um, I find put some words down the paper, any words, even if it's not words that will be, end up in the final paper, just just put some words down. <laughs> um, or like, I don't know what your essay is about. What's your essay about? Let us know. Um, but I often would put quotations that I found interesting just down in a Word document and then sort of build on them from there. Um, I find when I was doing English Lit essays, I found that really helpful. Um, but yeah, definitely easier to start from a page with text on it than a blank page. Apparently Comic Sans helps because it makes it less final. Brilliant. Uh, what was the, let me find what the self-care bunny was saying. Remember to make time for yourself during the holidays. Great. Um, I'm gonna do this in a bright color. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a purple or a blue. So then I just, I always started my essays by putting quotes down too. Yes. Someone is tapping away. It always sounds like Morse code. Remember, this is the part where I also often miss out a letter. Remember, remember me. Remember.
Number two. Make time. Okay. Yes, so. Okay. Maybe. So that's started there. I'm going to just go over it. Hopefully, see some sharpening. Out of all the lifestyle library picks thus far, which has been the most surprising read for you? Like one that made you think or feel in a way you weren't expecting? I have them all right here, which is why I'm... <laughs> um... Oh gosh. Who's surprising? I think in some ways, um, well, let's have answers to that. In some ways we crossed a bridge and it trembled. We crossed a bridge and it trembled by Wendy Palman um, because I had done a lot of reading about the Syrian war and I'd, I've done a lot of work with refugees from the war and, and just like I, I consider myself someone who knows quite a lot about it, but the way Wendy Palman assembled that story and arranged it and, and told it and just really put the voices of Syrian people at the centre of it and put Syrian people at, at the centre of it, like to the point that I felt like I knew them or knew fragments of their life at least, um, was just astonishing to me and I think really gave me a model for how I'd like to share those stories going forward. Um, and then another one, um, I really enjoyed reading Howl's Moving Castle together because that was like on the other side of the spectrum, a very lighthearted fun pick and a story that I knew, but um, there's something about reading it together that just made it even more fun. So I liked that a lot. But I'm curious what your answers to that are. Um, Kristen says, I'm not lying, I've enjoyed every single one so far, but if you come softly, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's that's another example of a story that I think ever would have read, um, not at least because there weren't that many in print and they had to send off another print run just for Life's Library. Um, but yeah, and it was just remarkable and extremely sad too. Um, I read Jacqueline Woodson's Red at the Bone earlier this year and that's fantastic. So I really recommend that if you haven't read it yet. Ooh. Let me go over these words. Remember me. I started to watch Coco the other night. Or oh, not the other night, it was quite a few nights, quite a few weeks ago. And uh, it would be my second time watching it. And I was just like, I'm not in the emotional, not in the emotional place to uh to re watch this yet. Um, and I got a bunch of pictures um from this year printed out. And one of them was a picture from the Onward screening I went to. And before, before the, the film, like they had a, the van from the film outside and you could pose and take pictures in it. Um, but just looking at that, I was like, oh, that film is so sad. It's so well done, but it's so sad. Should make a video about films about grief. I've made one, one about books about grief. But yeah, films about grief. Put it on the list. Um, remember to make time. I suppose I'm curious, like how how do you make time for yourself during the holidays? Like if, if you usually spend the holidays with a lot of other people, or like you're working retail and there's just no time for yourself whatsoever in that. Um, me it's taking time to like read and to write in my diary but also just like go on walks and things but something that's quite useful about being a real early bird is that I often wake up I mean now I live by myself but in general I often wake up before other people wake up and that has always been quite um oddly liberating <laughs> 
because it just means that, yeah, no one else is around and I can have, have time to myself. Oh, I'm really glad you got to sign up again. Um, and I'm excited for you as well. I think we've got some really great books coming up and then some that we haven't even picked yet. I'm doing my best to look for fun books. Um, I just, I just, I have to do a lot of research on that, which is not a bad thing at all. I've got such an itch to reread an absolutely remarkable thing at the moment. Every time I look up at my bookshelf, it's there, looking back at me. What is making that noise? I wonder what they're drilling. I wonder if it's something exciting. Um, I'd probably take more time to read during the holidays. Gabby, journaling is how I make time for myself most regularly during the holidays. I do it every night and it's a good way to reflect on the day and my feelings. Um, Billy also got a physical subscription and I'm so excited. Yay! Catherine also joined recently and I'm looking forward to it, but teaching stage talk isn't the kind of book I would normally read, so I'm not sure how to motivate myself. Any ideas? Um, yeah, I mean, I think people are definitely like, kind of, kind of, huh. <laughs> people have definitely come up against this at certain points during Life's Library um, because you receive a book and you're like, oh, I wouldn't normally read this book, or, or you receive a book called On Immunity during a pandemic and you'd be like, oh, I didn't really want to read this book. Um, but I will say that something happens when you read that kind of book with other people. Um, so I would definitely recommend reading it, reading like 20, 25 pages and then just going in to the Discord maybe and seeing what other people, other people are saying, what you think about it so far. And also remember like, it's okay to not like a book. Like we're not all going to like every single book. Um, and, but you also might find a new favorite author or a new favorite genre. Um, and then also towards the end of the reading period, John and I release a podcast in which we talk about, in, in theory, what we liked about <laughs> the books. But in practice, we go off on a lot of tangents and like things that it has made us think about and conversations that started. And so often it's not even really centered on the book itself so much as like what it's prompted in our lives. Um, but yeah, I would really say that the um, discussions are, are something that really help. Um, because you just get different perspectives on books. Um, so yeah, but also, you know, just take your time with it. This is how it's looking. I'm gonna fancy it up a little bit more. Um, kinda wanna do a little exclamation point there. Um, Maybe another one. I don't know why. And I want to put some green in. I wanted to put some green in for a while. For me, self-care during holidays is allowing myself to be alone sometimes. Yes. It is okay to need time to yourself. Like, that's not rude. Um, I don't know if this is the case for other people, but whenever I wanted or expressed wanting alone time when I was younger, um, sort of in more of a family setting, I was told that that was rude. And um, it's been really transformative to learn that actually that isn't rude. <laughs> and that it's, yeah, it's completely okay to want some time to yourself. Um, and that whether or not people allow it, allow it or give you permission for it, like there is always a way to take it. Um, Bree says, I'm surprised I liked reading about immunity during a pandemic. Yeah, me too. Um, I actually bought that book for a friend just the other day because I was like, this really helped me and was very calming and soothing to me. Uh, this being On Immunity by Eula Biss. Um, so yeah, you never know. <laughs> I think that's the thing I've really learned about myself is like, I don't actually know which books I like because um, I like it all. Hi Maddie, welcome, welcome. Um, Catherine, oof, yes, I moved back in with my parents a few months ago after living alone. I've had to get a lot better about not feeling bad about taking time for myself. Yeah, it's really tricky. Um, Bobby, yes, my partner and I like to go on vacation with another couple and I'm constantly being told that hanging out in the bedroom is rude, but I desperately need that quiet time. Yeah, and I think it's like, it's such 
a sort of like learned reaction really to it. Like, oh, you can't remove yourself from something because it's rude or it's impolite or we're all in this together. And then that just makes me feel less able to be part of that setting because, um, because I'm not being authentic. I'm not like being in touch with how I'm actually feeling. I'm just like really performing. Um, so I've sort of become aware that in order to be my best, my best self in public and social settings, I have to allow myself to listen to what it is I need, whether that's social time or retreating time. Unfortunately, right now it's um, more difficult to get the social time that I need, but I do my best. Before this, I walked to the local bakery, and got a cinnamon bun and had a chat with the people who work there who I know. Um, and that was just really nice. And the cinnamon bun was so good, so good. Um, I tend to escape using my phone. Yeah, exactly. Like if your body needs something and your mind needs something, you are going to find ways to give it to yourself. It's just, you know, who, who are you trying to please really? Like, who are you doing this for? Um, I know it's easier said than done, but it is something that's been kind of transformative to me. So I thought I would mention it. Um, so we've gone for like a sort of like abstract, it almost looks like Saved by the Bell. Oh, Billy is making cinnamon buns right now. I'm coming over, because one cinnamon bun was not enough. Um, it's always the case actually. One cinnamon bun is never enough. I don't know why I ever think it is. This is getting more and more abstract. I feel like I want to give this bunny some grass. I love spending time alone, but now I feel the isolation from lockdown makes it really hard to communicate properly with strangers when I have to. Yeah, I absolutely understand that, Lemon. I also find that my jaw gets tired quicker when I have those days. Like, I think after this, my jaw is going to feel quite tired because it's not used to talking to people um, as much as it was. So that's, it's, I'm really curious to see what, yeah, what all the different many, many effects of, of this year and next year are going to be on all of us, both in terms of like social interactions and how we look after ourselves and our priorities and travel and, and all of that. Um, but it's a challenge for sure. And also I think a lot of the time you want to talk about something that isn't <laughs> the headlines all the time. And it's difficult when you feel like, oh, well, I haven't really been doing anything. Um, Kristen says, I know it might sound silly, but I'm scared of the world getting back to normal after COVID because I'm so scared of social situations overwhelming me again. Yeah, I think that there are, again, I think there are a lot of people who feel the same way. Um, as we ease out of it, I think we're just going to have to really prioritise our own well-being and not feel pressured into doing anything that we're not comfortable doing. And I think that's absolutely okay. Um, Lizzie, taking time for yourself is such a skill. I'm a total extrovert and I'm, if I'm not careful, I can forget to give myself alone time. Every time that happens, it impacts my mental health poorly. Yes. Yes, <laughs> that is me. Um, yes. <laughs> because I crave social time. I crave it. And then I sort of pack it in a lot and then I forget to take time for myself and then I just sort of collapse a bit. Brie, as someone coming out of lockdown and an introvert, I feel like I need to take more time to recharge lately. That's also something that I both found and heard a lot um, coming out of our previous lockdown here. Um, Catherine, in some ways it's been very difficult to not have that social interaction, but I don't miss the stressful parts of it. Lots of people feeling like um, Kristen does, Eve does as well. Sarah, what are some ways to stay motivated during this time? I feel like there's not much to look forward to right now. I'm trying to stay positive, but it's hard. I have a rewards chart. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but it has stickers on it. Um, and every time, and it has things like drink water, bike ride, write fiction, read, brush my teeth, um, just things like that, really easy things. And um, it has a little slot for every single day. And once I've completed it, um, 
I put a sticker on it. I think I'm going to, like, lots of people said that it was helpful for them as an idea. So I should just make a little video about it, just a little simple one, and just show me how it works. Um, but it's fun. And then I also get to have lots of really fun stickers that I could put on it. Um, other ways that I can keep myself motivated have been giving myself a little, like, mental reward centers. <laughs> um, so that's something like at 12 p.m., I will go for a walk for 15 minutes. Or, you know, I have some friends that live nearby-ish, so I'm like, before it gets dark, I want to go for a walk past their place and they'll pop their head out the door and we'll have a chat for five minutes. Or even if that's not possible, like, it's just standing up, doing something different. It's like, it's just really short-term rewards have um, been helping me. And the other thing that I found really helpful lately is, because as I've mentioned, like I really struggle with it getting so dark, is if I close the shutters before it gets fully dark, and I close the shutters and the curtains, and then I put all the lights on, it doesn't feel like dark is something that has happened to me. It feels like something I've chosen. That really tells you a lot about my control focus, but it helps me. Um, Onyx, I just had a one hour, 45 minute chat with a friend from uni, which was great because I hadn't probably talked to her in a long time. But now I'm also glad to be able to take time to recharge. Yeah, I find face turns actually quite exhausting. And I think at the beginning, I was just doing loads and loads and loads of them because I really wanted that social hit. Um, but now I've definitely learned, I can do like one a day. I mean, I have like much more than that in meetings, but in terms of catch ups and stuff, I can do like one, one, maybe two FaceTimes a day. I can't do more than that because it's just like, there is something oddly draining about it. Um, oh, I'm glad that you guys saw my reward chart. Lola says I might do it as well in my bullet journal. That's a great idea. Um, but yeah, I think it's from uni, which gave me goals and something to do. Um, Sarah says they miss me. I was in a gap here, which ended because of COVID, and I still have four months until uni starts. I don't know what to do with my time. Yeah. Uh, can I recommend drawing self-care bunnies? Because they're really fun. <laughs> I want to see pictures of your drawing and colouring as well, so feel free to share them on... Um... What's it called? Instagram. And tag me, or tag Life's Library, um, and Twitter and stuff, because I'm curious. What have you been, what have you been drawing? All right, what, what else? I feel like I want more grass. More grass, more grass. And I think I want more blue. Thank you for all the kind words about my bunny. Big fan. Wow, this has been so good for me already, honestly, just like making time to draw. And just to do something fun is is so vital. I need to remember that. I remember that last time we did this and then I sort of forgot again. Um, but it is, it's really good. I found online classes that inspire me and even if they're not useful, they help me um, keep a schedule and an active mind. Yeah, I keep meaning to two classes like that and all just like have them on in the background um so I kind of like absorb them by osmosis would be nice now I come out with a PhD in physics probably quite unlikely seeing as I can't even do maths um but who knows I could be a quantum physicist who knows <laughs> Um, I would suggest anything you've been putting off or something simple you haven't got around to. Um, yeah, I found that if I pair up tasks, like if I pair up doing something nice with doing something I've been putting off, it really helps. So it takes me the same time to fill up my bath as it does for me to vacuum my whole flat. Um, and it takes the same time for the kettle to boil as it does for me to, what was it? I can't remember if it was like, oh, it's, as it takes me for me to like properly make my bed. Um, so oddly like matching up tasks has been helpful. 
Um, but that's that's just me. That's how I manage things in my in my way. I think the other thing is just sort of like accepting that there might be things you can't do right now. Maybe this should have a little shadow of its own. Shadow. I just feel like this isn't, it's just hard to tell where the ground is really. Just a bit more grass. <laughs> this is the theme of this story. More grass, more grass. Sort of stoner bunny. Maybe they need some flowers in the grass. Ooh, maybe. That's an idea. Um, it's also funny because I would still be talking to myself if, if you all weren't here. Um, because I talk to myself a lot, <laughs> all the time, <laughs> all the time. Just have so many things to say, you know. I'm definitely like the friend who just texts the most. <laughs> I text all the time. Um, I found that therapy on FaceTime was easier for me to open up. Does anyone feel the same? I know some people who really feel the same. I've, I've heard people say, for me, I found it much harder and I was glad that when I was able to go back to in-person um, therapy, because that just suits, just suits me more. Um, but I think it's, it's different for everyone. And that's okay. Um, Uh, routine is really important, but I have been able to keep a consistent one. Yeah. And every time I try to keep a consistent routine, I break it in some way and then I feel bad. And then I sort of give myself a hard time for breaking it. Which is sort of not what we want. So, yeah, it's been tricky to keep routine. I think the thing that's been difficult in terms of keeping routine is that routine... Me keeping my routine relies on some kind of consistency in how, in my like functional brain, um, like the executive function levels of my brain. And if I don't have that, because some mornings I just don't, I'm not gonna be able to do things regularly. Like sometimes I just have to stay in bed a bit longer and sometimes I'm ready to go much earlier. My dog is keeping me busy. Oh, I have a dog. I applied to adopt a dog recently. And it wasn't for a specific dog. It was just like, here's all my information. Here's how I live. So uh, fingers crossed I will have a dog in the new year at some point. But we'll see. I sort of just like, I kept making excuses. And then finally, I was like, no, I've been wanting a dog for a long time. So hopefully, hopefully, I will have a dog. See, what's the time? 54, all right. We've got six minutes left. Um, just adding some, adding some flowers in. We're <laughs> really making this an extravaganza. Um, I feel like it's important, says Lemon, to find a routine that's easy enough to follow, but also allows for some freedom. For instance, making sure that you do everything you need to do while leaving time for some fun things. Yes, flexibility. Absolutely. Pre my routine went out the window. Yes. Uh, what type of dog? Um, really any, any type. Probably for practicality's sake, small to medium, because I have a garden but it doesn't have direct access to it, to my flat. Like you have to go down steps and stuff. Um, the flowers really helped. The flowers really helped. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I basically just want to give a dog a home that needs a home and have a friend, in general. <laughs> no, um, have, a, have a friend around, um, but yeah. So it's not really super important to me what kind of dog. Um, I won't be able to take on one that has like huge um, behavioral issues just because I don't have the experience with it, but I would definitely like a dog. 
Um, I'm 24 and yesterday I was like, maybe I should adopt a kid. And then I was like, maybe I should start with the dog first. Yeah, start with the dog first. Let me be your enabler. Um, I go to Hampstead Heath most weekends, which is a big park, like ancient heathland here in um, London. And but the, part of the reason why I go there is because there are always, always dogs there that run up to you and say hi. And it's just, it's like meeting I don't know, like 20 dogs in a day. It's great. Um, and there's some lovely, like all the dogs around there are just so lovely. So I'm a big fan of <laughs> um, everyone else's dogs. And I want one of my own. I wish I could just borrow a dog from a friend for a few hours. They have a service here called Borrow My Doggy, where you can sign up to like take dogs for walks whose parents, for whatever reason, aren't able to give them as much um, times as they'd like to. And I know quite a few people have signed up for that. So there might be a similar service in your age, in your area. But I would also, it would be more convenient for me if my friends had dogs too. So selfish. <laughs> okay, I think that's, I think that's where I'm gonna stop on the self-care bunny front. I need to sign it. If I don't sign it, it's not real. I am going to sign it in pencil. I'm going to sign it in this navy blue. What is the date? Is it the 23rd? 24th. 24, 11, 20. Remember to make time for yourself during the holidays. Hi, Kaylee. Speaking of dogs, Kaylee, you just got a dog. I loved your video about it, Kaylee. Um, it's so nice to see all these familiar faces in the chat. And by familiar faces, I mean usernames. I'm happy with how that date turned out. It's a good bunny. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll post it on Instagram or something. Oh. So we've got a few minutes left, if you have any other questions. She woke us up three times in the night, this Olive, Kaylee's new dog. I'm sorry, but she's also very cute. So, what are you gonna do, you know? What are you gonna do? Oh, I'm really glad you're able to come, Bobby. I really like doing these. I like to say, like, I'll do them every week. <laughs> but as I kind of said before, like, it depends how how I wake up in the day really and that's difficult but this is yeah this is such a wonderful day so such a wonderful way um for me to spend my time as well so I really appreciate having you all here um it's very calming relaxing for me too Catherine um and a good excuse to like get pencils out in color and I'm very excited to begin teaching a stage talk on a Thursday I think Friday um, and also, some of you have asked where you can find out about these events. There are, there is a calendar at lifestylebrewbookclub.com um, and you can find out there, we post like, where is it on a live stream or Q&A book discussion. And because it's a Google calendar, you can actually add it to your own calendar and you just have the events and the update and things. And there's information in the description about, um, about the event really. So <laughs> like the link to this will be in that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably the best way to keep on top of it. And then we also post about these events in the Discord, which is free to join, lifeslibrarybookclub.com slash join. Um, so for those of you who aren't part of Life's Library, it's a book club that me and John run. And um, even though paid subscriptions are closed at the moment um, and won't be open again until February, you can still join for free and you just basically read along with us, get the book from wherever you get your books from. <laughs> um, get it from the library, get it from a local bookshop, get an audio book, and you can read along with us and join in all the discussions and stuff too. So it's cool, I love it. I never know whether I should do the whole life library spiel, but I, again, it's something I'm really proud of and I love talking about. And look at all these lovely people who are in the chat. So yes, it was an absolute pleasure um, and I will see you next time. Thank you for coming everyone, bye.